16. John chapter 16, verses 7 through 15. We have responsive reading. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 그러나 진리의 성령이 오시면 그가 너희를 모든 진리 가운데로 인도하시리니 그가 스스로 말하지 않고 오직 들은 것을 말하며 장래 일을 너희에게 알리시리라. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Amen. Let us bless each other, be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. We always take the narrow path, but we can always rejoice. It is because God the truth is with us. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you receive all of the blessing through the, the God, the Holy Spirit, who guides us into the truth. So important information was set out, uh, through, sent out through the RUTC news, and everybody's preparing for the events that will happen in the summer. And we are able to confirm the blessing that God has given us. Uh, coming up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have a retreat for, for the remnant ministers. So individual churches, through this, uh, it is a time where they're able to receive the important work. So really have a time where you can really pray for all of the uh, pastors the assistant pastors that is inside of your department and really pray so that they can really receive the answer that is given from God. The World Remnant Conference that is a feast or a festival to Tarapang movement, it is taken place on July. And with the theme of eternal inheritance, eternal uh, covenant, we will receive the word. So this gathering into the uh, com conventional uh, co uh, co convention, we 
it has been five years since we had this kind of conference. Individually and by the church, we are being guided inside of the path of the 237 and the 5,000 tribes. And inside of that, many other remnants are being raised up. And through the remnant partisans, we will set up a new strategy so that we can do world evangelization. We are already receiving uh, calls. We want to invite this, this, and so remnants as a remnant partisan. So how can we do that? Uh, individually and by churches, they're contacting us. So inside of the 2000, uh, 237 and the 5,000 tribes, many of the random partisans will be invited here. Because this uh, is the first time it has taken place, so many people are asking, how can we, uh, what can we do so that we are led? We opened up the registration at 2 o'clock yesterday, and at 5 p.m., already 5,000 people have registered. So many people will be inside of prayer and are, will be guided. So I really hope that inside of prayer, be guided. And through the three uh, age of the three day weekend, we are being led by the three courtyards. So evangelists throughout the mission world, it will become the field where um, those people may truly hold on to the covenant. So inside in Mr. Prayer, we must all be guided. Really pray so that this, the partisan journey and the guidepost really arises inside of me and maybe become the witnesses for the prosperities. We are raising up the partisans throughout the whole, the all of the nations. It will become a time where we are able to see many of the fields and really see how God guided all of these remnants. I really hope that it becomes a time where you truly hold on to this and really pray for the prosperities. And today's title is the God, the Holy Spirit, who guides us into the truth. So inside of our lives, we can have problems and hardships. And many people will worry and fall into anxiety. We haven't read today, but if you see in verses 1 through 2, it says, in verse 2, the hours is coming, whoever, uh, uh, they will put you out of the synagogue, so they will chase you out of the church. And if you see in verse 1, it says, it says, keep you from falling away. So falling into resentment and complaint, we fall into unbelief. Jesus said, even though you face these kind of problems, do not fall into anxiety, do not worry. 
하나님을 믿으니 또 나를 믿으라 말씀하셨습니다. In John 14, 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And in verse 16, if you see, as I have asked the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever. And the Spirit of truth, He will. Uh, teach us all things and the peace that the world cannot give you will be given to you. Even in today's passage, starting off of the uh, chapter 16 of John, it says, the work of the Holy Spirit it's a title for that passage and it speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit throughout John chapter 16 because God the Holy Spirit is with us that is why we must not fall into anxieties or worries God the Holy Spirit who is eternal is with us forever and that is our status so whatever the situation we might fall into we are able to have victory if you see in John chapter 16 verse 20 if you see in the end you will be sorrowful but your sorrow will turn into joy because God will guide those who have received salvation, there is no need for us to fall into sorrow. We just have to find the plan of God and enjoy the plan of God. Then how can we find the plan of God? God the Holy Spirit uh, who is the truth is with us and we are able to find and discover the plan of God. I bless you in the name of our Lord. May you truly enjoy the work of God the Holy Spirit who guides us into the truth. And first, God the Holy Spirit, the Helper who helps us. In verse 7, it tells us, in verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. So what kind of work does this Helper do? So in Greek, it's parakletos, and it means the lawyer, pleader, and the intercessor. And in English, it's the helper and counselor. So the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us and helps us, intercedes us, and defends for us. How, how does He help us? He helps us so that we can do the work of God. But many other people, you're able to see that they're not doing the works of God and they're doing the works of the world. And they're running the errands of the world, which means that they are enslaved by the world and they're working diligently for that. So 
just like the Israelites when they were enslaved in, inside of Egypt, they were building the towers. Being enslaved by Egypt, it means that they were enslaved by Satan. Though we have received all of the blessings, because we do not know all these blessings, we are enslaved by the world and doing the works of Satan. The work of the God, the Holy Spirit, it, is, it helps us so that we can do the works of God. In John 14, 12, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works. So through the Helper, the Holy Spirit, we will do greater things than Jesus. In other words, it means that He will bless us so that we can proclaim the word, proclaim Jesus Christ inside of the world. That is why He says, me going away is an advantage to you. And then we are able to do greater works than Jesus. And the Helper, the Holy Spirit, He proclaims of Jesus Christ in John 15, 26, it says, But when the Helper comes whom I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about me. So Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus Christ and we will be able to proclaim of Jesus Christ. When we are inside of the works of the Holy Spirit to the ends of the earth we are able to live the life of the witness where we proclaim of the evidence of Jesus Christ inside of the world. And when the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us, we are able to reveal the glory of God. In verse 14 it says, He will glorify me, for He will take that as mine and declare it to you. So through the children of God, God the Holy Spirit will help us so that we reveal the glory of God. So if you want to really glorify God, then inside of our hearts, we're able to have this. So how can we glorify God? Though you eat, though you drink, you must do everything to glorify God. So how can we live for the glory of God? Through the works of the Holy Spirit, we are able to reveal the glory and we are able to glorify God. And it is the Holy Spirit who intercedes inside of us. In Romans 8.26 it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groaning to, too deep for words. So, the Holy Spirit knows our weaknesses. And Hebrews, Hebrews 4.15 He had received all of the things that we must, um, must have received. So He knows all of our weaknesses and 
He is telling us. And He is our helper. What is the reason where you, even though you did not pray, you did not perish? Because the Holy Spirit inside of us prays for us in groaning. And that is why we were able to not perish. So repeat after me. I am the person with the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 3, it tells us, Do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in you? So we reveal, so we do the works of God and we uh, uh, proclaim of Jesus Christ and glorify God and the and the Holy Spirit intercedes us, then it's over. He guides all of us. Whenever we pray, the work, the God, the Holy Spirit works. And if you see in uh, verses 8 through 11 in today's passage, He convicts. He convicts the world, and he will come. He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. In verse nine, it says concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. The original sin that mankind have, we cannot solve it with the powers of men. Only through faith inside of Jesus Christ we are able to overcome. But the world keeps on telling us that we are able to, we with our own strength can solve the original sin. So that is the reason why we have religion, or oh, you must live a kind life. But God says He convicts them, so rebukes them. And he concerning righteousness, the true righteousness that is given from Christ is only given through Christ. So he, Jesus came incarnated, solved our sin, curses, and the powers of Satan, and he broke that down and give us the true righteousness. So no matter what the case, mankind cannot be righteous on their own. But through Christ, God has called us righteous. And He, and he convicts us concerning judgment. Satan, he's already been judged, so there's no need for us to fear him. Because Christ has already won the victory, and we are the people who have already won. So I bless you in the name of the Lord that you go inside of the covenant holding on to that Christ has broken down everything and finished everything. And secondly, it says he will guide us into the truth. In verse 13, it says, if we receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, today we are able to have victory. There is a principle where we receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. There is no reason, no need for God us to give us the feeling of the Holy Spirit when we are having fun inside of the world. So we are playing games or drinking, dancing. There is no need for us to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We always heard the word. So Jacob, he was uh, making porridge 
there's no need for God to work and give him the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So when does the when do we receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit? When we pray. This one person confessed the seven bodies and seven journeys, seven guideposts. Uh, I really wanted to enjoy this, so I started writing this down. So this person said that you, I will write it down ten times a day. So this person had no choice but to concentrate on writing because whenever this person had a little bit of time, they had to write down the seven journeys, seven or uh, seven parties and seven journeys, seven guideposts. We have the prayer topics for that. But if you write them down, you're able to know that it's not that easy. But to write that down for 10 times, then you're able to know that you have no time for your own. If you're only writing that down, then you have time. But if you're going to work and have families, then you're not able to. But this person wrote it down for two day, 20 days. But as this person was writing this down, this person thought to themselves that this is not prayer of my own. It's the prayer of Reverend Yu. But after writing it for 20 times, this person was able to realize that this is, the, this is their own prayer. So no matter what kind of good things that we might have, if that was to become actualized inside of me, then we have to pray. Truly, be guided inside of this prayer that we have. And you're able to know that this one day will become a great strength to you. And even the remnants confess this. They're just writing this 777, but later on they're able to hear the message. They're able to listen to the stream of the headquarters and they were able to listen the word of the pulpit. So spiritually, they were coming to life. And Satan, knowing this, makes us so that we cannot do this. So really record this prayer and listen. And inside of that prayer, Call out the names that you want to pray for. Yesterday, my wife turned something on. And this one person recorded the prayers for me and sent it to my wife. And I, as I heard that those prayers, I truly had joy and receives so much strength. God made the triune God be upon the head of Pastor Shin. And they just recorded that and sent it to me and I received so much strength that, oh, the believers are praying for me this way. I was so overjoyed and receive so much strength. So we must realistically enjoy prayer. What is the mystery of receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit? It is inside of prayer. And we hold on to the word and we pray. God to the people of the covenant gives them the word of the covenant. God, from the beginning and same today, works by giving us the word. So when we listen to the word, we must not just take it for example. We must concentrate and listen to the word. 
God guides us, guides our life through the Word. So inside of the Bible, you, you're able to see the Word of God was upon this, this person. And God gives us the Word, and through that Word, God guides us. So to so-and-so, the Word of God has come upon them. It means that it's pretty much over. So what kind of word are you listening to today? And that will make your life. Through the pulpit of Hana Church, what kind of word are you listening to? That, those words will make your life. That's how much this word is important. God created the world with uh, the heavens and the earth through the word. He didn't use some kind of material to make the heaven and earth. Only through the word he created the heavens and the earth. So through the word we have recreation take place inside of us. When we hold on to the word that's when true answers start to come. And that's when we start to move. That is how we are re receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we hold on to the partisan journey and guidepost. And so that those words become true inside of me, we hold on, to, we continue to listen to the word. And inside of those prayers, we are able to see the work of God taking place. The guidance of the Holy Spirit is through word and prayer. When we sit down, we pray. And when we leave, we pray. When we meet somebody, we pray. We pray so that may this be the meeting inside of the Holy Spirit. But those prayers might seem like nothing, but it's not. Those will all come together later on. And we go inside of the blessing of receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And God the Holy Spirit makes us enjoy freedom who is, uh, which is inside of Christ who is the truth so when we go inside of the truth we receive true uh, freedom in John 14 6 I am the way the truth and the life Jesus Christ said he is the truth in John 8 31 so Jesus said to the Jews who have believed himself, uh, him, later in verse 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. No matter what kind of person you may be, when you reside inside of Christ, you will receive true freedom. And if you see in the Bible, you're able to see, uh, John chapter 3, you're able to see the religious person, Nicodemus. And at night, he comes to Jesus. So there's many meanings behind this. But to this Nicodemus, Jesus tells him, to you have to be born again. So this Nicodemus received true life by meeting Christ. And when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, and Nicodemus was also there. And if you see in John 4, uh, chapter 4, you're able to see a person that wanted to be happy through men, and that was this Samaritan woman. 
But after meeting Jesus, this person's true joy and true worship was restored. And in John chapter 5, you're able to see a person that was ill for 38 years in, next to the uh, Bethesda. So somebody had to carry him inside of the river so that he could receive healing. But this ill man who was ill for 38 years met Jesus and received true healing. And if you see in John chapter 8, you're able to see this woman that was caught in the midst of adultery. And after meeting Jesus, uh, this person received forgiveness. In John chapter 9, you're able to see a person that was blind from men, uh, a blind man that was blind from birth. After meeting Jesus, he was able to see. And in John chapter 11, you're able to see Lazarus who was dead. But he came to life. So inside of Jesus Christ, there is true freedom. And inside of Christ, we are able to know what is to come. So we have no choice, but uh, we have no reason for us to worry about the future. And Acts 2.17 I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So what does this mean? It means that we are able to know what is to come. That is why the kingdom of God is already guaranteed to us. Philippians 3.20 But our citizenship is in heaven. A life that knows that their lives are uh, their future is guaranteed. Their lives are different than others. There are many people who are martyred because of this gospel. But where was the reason how these person was were able to become martyred but still have joy? Because they were able to know that the heaven was guaranteed for them. So there were the lives that they were living right now did not matter to them. In Psalms one one hundred thirty nine through seven. Let us read together. Where shall I go for your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Hallelujah. The right hand of the Lord holds me. Even though we are wherever we are, he, we are inside of the hands of the Lord. So to the evangelist, wherever you go, because you're inside of the hands of the Lord, there is nothing we need to worry about. And today's passage, if you see in verse 23, in the days you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask, of the Father in my name, you, He will give it to you. And in 24, until now you have asked nothing in my name, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So when you hold on to the name of Christ, you are able to receive answers. There's no need for us to worry. There's nothing that we need to worry about. Today, 
because the Holy Spirit guides us into the into Christ, who is the truth. So there is nothing for us to worry about. We just have to enjoy. Where do we enjoy? We enjoy it inside of the field. Inside of our families, the schools, churches, inside of our occupations, do not receive scars. Really enjoy the gospel. Are you faced with a problem? Then think of it as a chance for you to enjoy the gospel. If you see 1 Thessalonians, you are able to see Paul was faced with the persecution and he was imprisoned. In Philippians, it, says, uh, it tells us an important word. Paul being uh, imprisoned, some people received strength and went out to evangelize. And some people was envious and they proclaimed the word. And there were people who were in discouragement. But what did Paul say? This or that, it does not matter. So what was he faced with? He was in prison. But Paul still said, so the, me being in prison, it is so that we can proclaim Jesus Christ. So no matter what kind of hardship that you may be faced with, you find the work of evangelism there. And Paul also knew that the things of this world is nothing. Because inside of the problems, when he was able to enjoy the gospel, he was able to see that there is nothing for him to worry about inside of the world. So all the things that he knew, he saw it as rubbish. And he became the man of the gospel. Even though I'm hungry or not, even if I'm thirsty or not, it does not matter. He was able to know that uh, he could be inside of hardship or not. It did not matter. And when we are faced with a hardship, it is hard. So in the name that God has given us, I am able to do everything. So really, truly, enjoy the gospel inside of all the environments and all of the problems and hardships. Then we are able to see the 237 and the 5,000 tribes where God has prepared. So for this work, God has given us this authority. First Peter 2.9, it says, But you are the chosen race and the royal priesthood, a holy nation. Why has he given us these blessings? And it's so for this own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God has called us to do the works of Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ and given us the work of Christ to us. Why did he give us that? So that we can save the 237 nations and the 5,000 tribes. And that is the absolute goal for God. 
So no matter what the case, we must be able to connect with the 237 and the 5,000 tribes. Our prayer topics must match with this. And that is the way how you receive the blessing of God. When we receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit who leads us into sight of the truth, we are able to enjoy that blessing. So when you are filled by, when you receive power by the Holy Spirit, you will become the end, witnesses to the ends of the earth. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we are able to hold on to the important covenant of 237 and the 5,000 tribes, and you are able to enjoy this individually. I really bless you in the name of the Lord. May you have victory. Let's uh, repeat after me. Let us enjoy the power of the Holy Spirit which guides us into the truth. I really bless you in the name of the Lord that you may you really be guided by the Holy Spirit who leads you into the truth.